Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 12. Woe to him that built a tower of blood and established a city by iniquity. I want to start out by giving infinite honors to my heavenly father, my great king, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Kadash, double honors to our elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone, and salutation to my fellow laborers in the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, pushing his beloved truth across the four winds. Shalom on you, brothers. All right, uh, I brought out the scripture in the book of Habakkuk because I came across a nice, edifying clip uh, of a so-called white man exposing the sins of his forefathers, and he's telling history from a perspective we didn't learn um, in these schools. He's giving it to, to you raw, and um, he's fulfilling um, this scripture I'm about to bring out right now, Psalm 64 and 8. So shall they make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall fall away. And you have uh, flee away, Salakia. And you have whistleblowers. And you got so-called truthers of the so-called white race, biblically they're the Hebrew Edomites. And they're telling on their forefathers. They're coming against uh, the sins. You know, I'm not going to say coming against, but they're exposing all of the uh, malicious things that the nation of America has done since she, her, her birth. Okay. Um, when you learn history in these schools, they water it down. You know, they don't give you the full understanding what these pilgrims did when they came over here. They teach us like the pilgrims and the Indians were just getting along in merit to bliss. All right. That, that's a fallacy. You watering shit down. Yes. The Indians showed them how to, get through these grueling um, summers, but they rewarded them evil for their good. That's one of their sins. Let me get that. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 20. This was a foreign land to them. So in the the winters, when you go, well, anywhere in America, the winters are grueling and hard, okay? Even when you're down south, all right? This is uh, Jeremiah 18 and 20. Shall evil be recompensed for good? All right. For they have dig a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before them to speak good for them and turn away the wrath for them. So when they came over here, the Native Americans were good to them. They showed them how to get through these hard winters. All right. They showed them how to till the ground and what to grow and what not to grow. And in, 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 in response to the good deeds that the Native Americans, the Taino Indians uh, on the on the um, West Indies Islands, so on and so forth, in uh, response to the good deeds that they did, they did with them. They were at peace with them. They destroyed them. They took their land. They spoiled them. And this devil, he breaks down history accurately. All right, they're not going to teach history, American history to you the way this devil, all right, exposes his own people. It's beautiful. I love it. So I'm going to let it play, and then I'm going to follow it through the scriptures. It's very therapeutic. This continent has some of the most dramatic landscapes on the planet, from the ocean shorelines to the alpine mountains and the sandy deserts. And also in this landmass, from coast to coast and everywhere in between, there lived hundreds, if not thousands, of different nations. Tribes of people whose land this was. This was their home. But then others showed up. These were the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It wasn't no thousands and hundreds of nations. It was the 12 tribes in, in both of the Americas, all right? They left um, from under the Assyrian captivity, and they came to where mankind never dwelt over here in the West. All right, the so-called uh, Mayans, Incas, Aztecs, and Native Americans were all Israelites, okay? To these shorelines in their boats. And that is when everything changed. two American politicians visiting Paris closed the sweetest real estate deal they had ever seen. With the simple stroke of a pen, their country doubled in size. All for just $15 million. 
But in this deal, which was called the Louisiana Purchase, the U.S. didn't actually buy this land from France. France didn't actually own the land. What the United States was buying was the imperial rights to this huge swath of North America. This basically meant that France would stay out of the way and let the budding new empire, the United States, colonize it without interfering. If the United States really wanted ownership over this land, they would need to get it from the people who were here first, which at the time was lots of different native tribes. These are the people who had been here for thousands of years, way before Europeans had the idea of leaving their continent. And this land that the U.S. just bought was theirs. Free gift. Land that the U.S. just bought was theirs. Oh, and this isn't just me, like some modern enlightened person looking back and judging the United States at this time. The U.S. knew that this wasn't their land and that they were going to have to buy it from the people living there. And their big plan was to do things differently, not like the old imperial powers that they had just broken away from. In fact, George Washington was, quote, determined that the U.S. government's administration of Indian affairs shall be directed entirely by the great principles of justice and humanity. Yeah, right. Go USA. Let's do this in the right way. So instead of conquest, they would negotiate and sign formal treaties with these native nations. Then they would pay them for their land, fair and square. After all, this was a country whose founding document highlights justice, tranquility, welfare, and liberty. In our series, How the U.S. Stole, we get to see how the U.S. grew from a group of English settlers to a global superpower. But none of those stories would exist without this one. The origin story. The first thing that the U.S. ever stole. So Europeans are pouring into this newly formed country, the United States. And the government is making deals and signing treaties with the tribes, allowing these newcomer immigrants to settle on their land. At first, this is a fairly peaceful transactional process. The U.S. would offer food, farming equipment, cash, the services of a blacksmith, all in exchange for ownership over this land. But unsurprisingly, a lot of these tribes had no interest in moving out of their ancestral lands in exchange for, like, farming equipment. And this is where all of George Washington's ideals of justice and humanity really start to dissolve. The U.S. was becoming a more powerful nation. They needed more land for their booming population. So the impatient settlers and their government started playing dirty. The westward movement <laughs> was like a great tidal wave. You start to see what happens when these tribes say no to the newly powerful United States. In one instance, one group of tribes up near the Great Lakes didn't want to sell their land. They told the United States that this river would be the border and to not cross it, to stay off their land. The U.S. said no, and they took them to war and lost twice. But on the third time, they won the battle and forced the tribes to sign a treaty giving away all of this land, basically all of present-day Ohio. Something very similar happened down here when the Seminole tribes refused to leave their land. The U.S. military came in, another war killing thousands, forcing the tribes to sign a treaty and pushing them into the swampy interior of the state where they had no access to their farmland or the ocean. Down here in what was becoming Alabama, the Muscogee Nation refused to sign a relocation treaty, but not wanting to go to war, agreed to sell a portion of their land in return for a guarantee that they could keep the rest. And the United States agreed, and they actually did. And the Muscogee kept their ancestral lands forever. Womp womp, no, that didn't happen. Four years later, a bunch of white settlers moved in, boxing the Muscogee out of their ancestral land. As tensions grew because of this violated agreement, the U.S. military was called in to force the Muscogee out of their lands. No treaty was ever signed. I mean, the shenanigans ranged the whole gamut here. They would get tribal leaders drunk to trick them into signing this paper <laughs> that gave them all the land. They would appoint random people to be the tribal leaders and then tell them to sign away the land for the whole tribe. In another conflict, the Sioux and Arapaho nations defeated the U.S. military over and over until the U.S. finally signed a peace treaty acknowledging their land. And they were safe. Until gold was discovered eight years later, and the U.S. broke their treaty, redrew the boundaries, built roads on their land, and before you know it, you've got a bunch of white guys with gold pans harvesting this land. Treaties and justice be damned. Eventually, other tribes caught on to what was going to happen, realizing that refusing the U.S. government would mean violence. So they would sign the paper, take the money, and leave. Over the 
course of almost 100 years, the United States signed 368 treaties with tribal nations who were driven out one way or another to make way for white settlers who established control over this land that their government had stolen for them. And yes, you have all the paperwork, all the spreadsheets that they were making, all the treaties, a nice paper trail. But this was all a facade of justice, a thinly veiled campaign for imperial conquest. That's Solomon play. If you look at the, the whole thing, you've seen the name of it. Very edifying. He's uh, exposing these devils what they for uh, what they did to our beloved brothers, the Gadites, the Seminole, and uh, Gadites and Reuben, so-called Seminole Indians, the uh, Reubenites and Gad. All right, the tribe of Gad, the so-called Native Americans. All right, and that's what they did. They made treaties. They broke them. Uh, they used chemical warfare against them. And they just went on an all other assault, still in their land. But hey, all of this was prophesied to happen. And um, let's follow everything that they did through the scriptures because hey, they're gonna have to uh, bite that bullet. All right. This is uh, Zechariah five and four, and I will bring it forth, saith Yahweh of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. And that's talking about these chariots. All right. The Lord is going to use his chairs to bring forth judgment on the planet Earth and into the house of him that swear falsely. All right. So, so called white man, we just seen that he stole these lands from our beloved brothers and he made treaties and swore falsely. All right. These are universal laws, man. When you see these prophecies, they're universal laws. They have to come to pass. OK. And the Lord said he's going to send judgment into the house of him that swear falsely and a thief. The so-called white man fill those bills by my name and it shall remain in the midst of his house. All right. The Lord is going to destroy his house and it shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. All right. So he's going to tear their house down for the iniquity of their fathers. OK. Let me get another precept. This is uh, the book of Obadiah. Chapter one and verse uh, 18 and it's reading. It reads, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of he he Esau for a stumble. Esau is the so-called white man. And they shall kindle in them, that means burn their asses up, and devour them. And there shall be no more reigning out of the house of Esau, for the Lord have spoken it. And that's because this devil built a city by blood. All right? He built his, his house with iniquity. All right? And he doesn't understand time and judgment. All right. He don't understand that you can go centuries uh, ruling and rampaging the planet Earth. But the, the Lord deals with time and judgment. OK. And the so-called white man don't understand that when you talk to these simple Americans, they think America is going to go on forever. But they don't look at history. The Romans thought Rome was going to go on forever. The Babylonians thought Babylon was going to go on forever. So on and so forth. And America is the most vile out of all of the nations that were before it. And what make these people think all of the atrocities and calamities they bought on all the peoples that are not just the Israelites, everybody, that they're going to um, just ride off into eternity and uh, don't get judged for the things they've done. Okay? This is the book of Job. Chapter 17, start at verse 5, and jump down to verse 8. He that speak of flattery to his friends. That's what this devil did. His words were smoother than butter when he made those treaties. All right? We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. And what did he say? He said, George Washington say we're not, we're not just going to come in like all of the people did before us. Con with, with conquest, just coming in like brute beasts and overtaking a ram. He said we was going to do things by decree. Unrighteous decrees. We're going to put it in the legislation, make treaties, and we're going to break them. We're going to do it by deceit. We're going to take their lands by deceit. And that's what the devil did. All right. They they came and flattered the Native Americans. OK, and he, he that speak flattery to his friends, even the eyes of his children shall fail. You see, and through his flattery, he, he built the greatest country known in these modern times. OK, 
the greatest nation in these modern times and his children have benefited for it. But now we're in the time where his children are going to get judged for the iniquity of their fathers. OK, Let's skip down to verse eight. Upright, upright men shall be astounded at this and the innocent shall stir up himself against the hypocrite. All right, because he said he built this country off of biblical principles, off of justice, equity, so on and so forth. All right. But when you look at all of his actions, he's a fucking hypocrite. He doesn't care about justice. He doesn't care about equality. All right. He's a liar. He's a thief. All right. This is what he does. This is uh, the book of James. All right. And, and, the, and the scriptures are against him. All right. The scriptures is against this red orangutan devil. All right, the scriptures are on his ad. These prophecies are on his ass. He's out of here. All right, this is James 5 and 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come up on you. All right, the, the sins that they committed, all right, since the 1400s, all the way up to now, now is the time for them to pay the piper. All right. We're, we're in the last seconds of this devil's rulership. We're at the end of an era, the end of an age where we're about to have a paradigm shift and a shift in powers. Is This devil is about to descend into oblivion and lose everything he's built. His enterprise is about to be taken away. And you can see the birth pains of it. And the nation of Israel is going to arise. Quam Yasharala. All right. You see the tribes of Jacob awakening. Coming back to their heavenly father, now our great king, living according to his word, and he's going to lift us up out of gun, the dung hill, and we're living to see the fall of our enemies, all right? Great miseries is coming up on America. Ye riches, your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eating. Are moth the riches that America acquainted came out of uh, building a city by innocent blood. They went and got people that were at peace with them. They came and slayed people that were at peace for them, okay? People that helped them, they returned their help with, with, with uh, evil, okay? Your gold and your silver is cankered, all right? It's cursed. The way America acquired all of his wealth was through bloodshed, sin, iniquity. So their riches is cursed, Okay? They, they got that cursed Aztec gold, <laughs> like you read uh, when you look at that movie, uh, that movie um, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Their, their gold is cursed because of things that they did to acquire. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. All right. And we're the witnesses against them. All right. The, uh, out, we're the descendants of our ancestors. How do we get on this landmass? All right. That's that's enough in itself. We witness against them. Let me in fact, let me get a precept for that. All right, how the fuck we get over here? This is Exodus 21 and 15, all right? And it reads, oh, that's not it. All right, 16. And he that still of a man, we were stolen from a whole nother continent and sell of him and we were sold. Our ancestors were sold to different plantations, split up our families. Uh, he be found in his hand. We are still found in the land. All right. The descendants of the people that did those atrocities to it, they forwarded the affliction. They didn't make things right. They what their uh, bloody ancestors did. All right. They helped build up off of that foundation. OK. And he shall surely be put to death. And that's what's about to happen to this devil. OK. For the, the for the sins of their forefathers. They're about to um, reap what their forefathers have sown, and it's because they have forwarded what their forefathers did. Because it's written in another place that the, the son shall not die for the sins of the father. But when the son forwards the father's enterprise, all right, those are his sins too. They didn't make words right. In fact, let me get a precept to bag that up. Uh, in fact, I'm going to get two precepts. All right. This the Americans. This doesn't count for Americans. All right. The descendants here in America. Uh, this is what I want. All right. Here we go. This is Ezekiel 18 and 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Because this is what the so-called white man loved to say. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. 
You see, that's what they like to bring out. That was our forefathers. OK, we didn't do that. We didn't do have nothing to do with that. We weren't here. That's their logic. OK, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. All right. So they like to pull that scripture and say that, look, we're not guilty because of what our forefathers did. But they are. Let me just go over a few. Let me go over a few precepts because they're they not going to do this. This will make them guilty. They love America. When they hit a Star Spangled Banner, they take their hat off and stand up and put their heart, their hand on their heart. So they love their, their patriotic. All right. What their forefathers did, they're proud of it. They, they're not ashamed for what their forefathers did. All right. Now, this is Ezekiel 30 and 15. No, 33, Salaki. This is Ezekiel 33. And 15. Now, this is what they're supposed to do. This one will make them righteous, and you know they're not going to do it. If the righteous restore the pledge, give again that he have robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing equity, iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. So, are these so these Americans, are they going to give back their, all of their resources and give it to the so-called black man, Native American man, West Indian man, so-called Mexican, so on and so forth, hell to the fuck no. So they are guilty as charged. They wouldn't have the way things are ran right now. They wouldn't have it any other way. For them to be righteous, they have to tear down this whole system and restore what they took from the tribe of Gad. They have to give it all back. They're not going to do that. They wicked. So yes, you're going to get judged for the sins of your forefathers because you wouldn't have it no other way. What they laid out, that foundation that your forefathers laid out, all right, you love it, all right? You made songs of mirth. Oh, see, can you see? You know that bullshit. When they hear that, they stand up. They respect it. They pledge allegiance to that flag through that the, the bloody uh, murder that their forefathers did. So, yeah, you about to go down. About to go down, niggas. Y'all the y'all the real niggas to be honest. All right, here we go. All right, verse uh, three: Your gold and silver is cankered, curse, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, because they got that their riches for what they did to us. That's how they be. You had damn near two hundred years, a uh, hundred so plus years of free labor. All right. Free labor, man. That, that's that's real wealth when you have slaves, man. And you shall eat your flesh as it were fire. And that's what we're about to see. We're about to see them eat their flesh literally. And you have heaped treasures together for the last days. We're in the final hour. We pay, we, we're in the last day, but hey, we, we pass the last day. We are literally in the final hour, the final minutes of this devil descending into oblivion, going into slavery himself. Behold, the higher of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. You see, let me read that again. Behold, the higher of the labors who have reaped down your fields, talking about the tribe of Judah, talking about the, the Native Americans, because you took their fields by fraud, which is which is of you kept back by fraud. You stole it and then made them work on it for free without paying them. Cry of, we're the ones crying because two thirds of our people, they love the so-called white man. You bewitched them, but the men of the Lord are crying. For the abominations going on around about us. We are pleading to the Lord to take your asses down. And cries of them which have reaped into the ears of the Lord of Shabbat. And that, that goes the Lord of the armies. The, 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 the Lord of the heavenly hosts, man. Okay? You have lived in pleasures on the earth. All right? And been wanting. You have nourished your hearts in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just. People that were at peace with you. People that helped you when you were in dire, when you were in dire straits, you rewarded their you rewarded them evil for good, all right. And he do not resist you, okay. And this is all for the so called white man, the nation of America, all right. They're gonna reap what they've sown, man, all right. For what they did to our beloved brothers, the tribe of Gad, it's about to come on them twofold. It's about to happen to them twofold, okay. Let me get that scripture. This is a uh, revelation. 8, 18 and 6, alright? Alright? And it reads, Reward her even as she rewarded you. 
double unto her, double according to her works. Talking about Babylon, in the cup which she have full, filled, filled to her double, and that's a minimum because we're gonna be able to fill to you more than double. But the Lord said at a minimum, at a minimum, fill to their asses double. All right. So all the things you did to us, you're gonna get it back done to you tenfold. All right. And we love teaching this. We love prophesying. All right. It's a beautiful thing for a man to see the fall of his enemies. All right, this is Proverbs chapter 10, starting verse 2. Okay, and it reads, Treasures of wickedness profit in nothing, all right? All of this great wealth, all these trillions of dollars and gold, oil, all that shit the so-called white man has acquired from not just spoiling us, the Israelites, but all the peoples of the earth, all right? It profit of nothing, but the Righteousness delivered from death. And that's why we're getting built up in these scriptures and seeking the Lord like never before. So when the Lord bring down his judgment on all earth, we don't fall, go in that rapture. Yahweh will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he he causes the way to the substance of the wicked. All of these riches you acquired are about to be taken from you so-called white people overnight. All right, the dollar is going to collapse. Your infrastructure is going to fall. Life as you know it is not going to be the same. And our great king, he's going to come out of heaven and subdue the kings of the earth, okay? And this is why we have to come out here and prophesy these things and give warning to our people from Yahweh Bashem Shai and pronounce judgment on the so-called white man. That's why we go out there week in and week out, man. All right? These things are going to come to pass. Though they tear it, wait for it, because they will surely come to pass. All right? This is Proverbs 13 and 11. All right? And it's written. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. All right? Though what you did to the Native Americans, all right, and the tribe of Judah, the so-called Negroes, all right, all of that wealth you acquired, that trillions of dollars and all uh, gold, silver, oil, all that shit is about to be diminished. All right? But he that gathereth by labor shall increase. The he that get his money honestly, upright, shall increase. Okay? So-called white man did nothing upright and honest. Look, his own people are making clips on him, exposing him how he made treaties, broke the treaties. All right. How he came in with brute force and took people's stuff. All right. How he gave them small park blankets and used chemical warfare to take a people down and then take their lands from. Them. All right. Nothing's righteous about this so-called white man. Who is he to be the hammer of the earth and tell people what they shouldn't and shouldn't do and have a moral compass telling uh, Russia, you can't go into Georgia. You can't do this. Man, shut the fuck up. Who are you to tell uh, Saddam Hussein they can't go overtake Kuwait and take Kuwaiti gold? Who are you? You've done it all. You, everything you're telling people to, can't, to do, to not do, you've done it. Who, who gave you the authority to police the earth? You the, you're a fucking hypocrite. Let me get that. This is... is uh. Job 20 and 5, okay? The triumphant of the wicked is short. And, and this is just a little season. We read our Revelation 21st chapter. No, it's the 20th chapter. It say this devil will be lose out of his pit for a little season. So from the 1400s to uh, 2023, uh, whatever, whatever is after that, it's just a little season in the eyes of the Lord. All right? The triumphant of the wicked is short. And the joy of the hypocrite is for but a moment. All right? He tells Saddam them, you can't go in Kuwait and spoil them, but you went all over the earth spoiling everyone. You ready to go? You went in Libya, spoiled them. You, you went in Iraq, spoiled them. You ready to go in Iran and try to spoil them. You came here on this landmass and spoiled the Native Americans, but you got the nerve to tell Russia they can't go into Georgia or they can't go into Ukraine when they doing the same things you've done? You fucking hypocrite, you piece of shit diabolical piece of shit narcissist degenerate piece of shit alright this is the book of Sirach 29 I'm going to start at the fourth verse alright and it's written many when a thing is lent them reckon it to be foul and put them to trouble to help them. This is the so-called white man. This is these scriptures I'm about to read is talking about a full flesh niggard. This is how the so-called white man get down. And in two-thirds of our people, I didn't deal with niggas that do this shit too. 
okay? So he have received, he would kiss a man's hand. This is what he did to the Native Americans. And for his neighbor's money, he would speak submissively. He went to them, his words are smoother, brother, made treaties, told them we'll pay for your land. And then after we do doing the crops, we'll give it back to you. Just lied, all right? Just to get what he wants. But when he should repay, he would prolong the time and return words of grief and complain of the time. This is what he did our people. This is the so-called white man in a nutshell. If he prevail, he shall he shall hardly receive the half. No, he's going to take, take, take more and more. And he will recount as if he had found it. All right? He's going to be like, this is mine. He will come in your shit, take your shit and say, oh, I discovered this. What, what, what did uh, this nigga uh, Christopher Columbus and his son Diego Columbus do? They came over here to the Western Hemisphere. Hemisphere went to the West Indian Islands where you had millions of people already occupied and say, look, we discovered this. This is ours. <laughs> we found it. <laughs> There's only something a devil would do. And he would count it. And, and look, this is what they say. And he would count as if he had found it. <laughs> only a devil. This is the, the Lord is teaching you the mind of a maniac. This is how the so-called white man thinks. All right. If not, he have deprived him of his money. He's going to take your shit, man. And he have forgotten him. He And he have gotten him an enemy without cause. And that's why all the nations under the sun calls him the white devil. All right. All of them. The Arabs, Chinamen, everyone calls him the white devil. He pay of him with cursings and railings and honor. And for honor, he will pay him disgrace. For you keeping it real with them. All right, the Native Americans were honorable with them. That's one thing they do teach us. You know, when they, I, I had to dress up. Wait, when I was in elementary, they dressed me up as. I don't think I was dressed up as a king. For I forgot how that play went. They had me dressed as a king, but um, I remember the play. They had the Native Americans and the Pilgrims. All right, and they they. All they taught us was that they got along. They, they ate together. They broke bread together. And, you know, they didn't teach us about the wars in elementary. They just put it like they, they was together in marital bliss. And that's a lie. All right. Why even teach the children that? Show the children what happened when they came over here and what they did. Uh, them hooking up the day one, one day and, and having a meal together, that was just so they could get in the dough and see how the houses ran so they could occupy it and take over it. All right. Tell them the truth of the, of the situation, the dynamics, why they tried to come in and be and be nice to the Indians, so on and so forth. They want to get in the door and see how the operation is ran so they can take over. All right. The narrator is a motherfucker. That's how they narrated it to us in the educational industrial complex. And it's a lie. OK. Many there have for have refused to lend for another's man ill dealing fearing to be defrauded. And that's why we, we is written in the um, in the same book. Never trust thine enemy. All right. Never deal with him with business and commerce. The only way you're supposed to deal with the so-called white man, as long as you're under his power, you have to abide by his laws, you know. But when we get this power back, oh, no. The only relationship we're going to have with them is them, us giving them orders. They, they don't have, we don't want to hear their ideas. All right. We're not doing nothing by diplomacy. All right. You're either going to do as you told or get put down with that rod of iron and get your bones broken. Okay. This is um, the book of Daniel. Daniel Allah. Chapter 2. And I'm going to start at verse 20. And it's written. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of Yahweh forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and seasons. All right. And the, and the times and the seasons are definitely changing. All right. They're getting shorter. Time is speeding up for these prophecies to come to pass. He removed kings, all right? And that's what he's doing right now. He's taking the so-called, he's dethroning the so-called white man right now and set of up kings. And he's lifting up the nation of Israel, okay? He give of wisdom unto the wise, all right? His service to prophets and knowledge unto them that no understanding, those that are seeking him. All right. He revealed the deep, the deep and secret things. He give us the understanding of these prophecies so we understand what's about to happen in these end times. The so-called white man is about to get taken down. All of the nations that fought against Israel are about to get taken down. All right. And he's about to uh, raise up his men to be the new guardians of the galaxy. OK. 
He know of what is in the darkness. We understand the lies. We're not uh, ignorant of the same devices. And the light dwelleth with him. Okay? The truth. All right? The truth. And the Lord is about to take this goddamn devil down, man. And, and uh, put uh, crowns upon his servants, the prophets. All right? Those that stood, stood so stiffly for the testimony of Yahweh Shai. What are these? All right? And who is him of a high stature? And what he was doing, putting crowns on his servants' heads, man. Our great king. Okay? This is um, the book of Psalms. Book of Psalms 37. I'm going to start at the ninth verse. All right. For evildoers shall be cut off, the so-called white man. All right. What they did to the tribe of Gad. All right. What they did to the Incas, the Mayans, the Aztecs. Okay. The Soto, them Spaniards, what they came and did to them. All right. What the Dutch, uh, uh, the French, all right? All those, the British, what they did to the tribe of Judah, all right? They're going to get cut off for that. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. His servants, the prophets, man, that leg number, that 144, and that innumerable multitude. For yet a little while, this is just a little while. This, this is a light affliction we're going through, Akin. And the wicked shall not be, and the wicked shall not be, all right? You, you, but the day is coming. Well, you're gonna you're not gonna be seeing this so uh these white people on Capitol Hill, all right, uh going to these GA summits and uh being the head of the world leader saying how they're gonna do business and commerce and the and, and, and setting the laws that govern us on the planet Earth. That day is coming to a, a swift halt, okay? All right, for yet a little while the wicked should not be. Yeah, thou shalt Diligent consider his place and it should not be. Nah, man, you can't kill millions and millions of people and don't think nothing's gonna happen to you. That's how these these that's how these sinners Americans think. They think putting these the tribe of Gad on these reservations, all right, and let them live on a small landmass when they own all of this. They don't think nothing's gonna happen to them for that. Their pride has deceived them. All right, they don't understand time and judgment. They think because they got away for got they think they got away from what they did to tribe again. No, it don't work like that, play boy. All right. But the meek shall inherit the earth, his servants, the prophets, those that seek him diligently, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Yeah, well, our great king come back, nobody's gonna practice war no more, man. All right. The Lord is gonna give us that spiritual power where he's gonna come take down the kings of the earth and we're going to live in a he's uh we're going to have a kingdom of peace a prince of peace we're going to have a mortal king kingdom of peace where we're ruling and everybody else is up under us the wicked plot of against the just and gnashes his teeth upon him gnashing upon him with his teeth all right with his armies all right that great iron teeth that's what that all this legislation that they're passing to uh take away uh free speech Take away your gun rights, so on and so forth. All right? It's to come down on his service to prophets. All right? That's the just. They're about to come down on us and, and deem us domestic terrorists. Yahweh shall laugh at him, for he see that his day is coming. His day is, is upon him. All right? This place don't have 10 years, man. This place about to be done away with. The wicked have drawn out the sword. He nobody got a, sh a short time. So he about to come down with great wrath, I can and have bent their bow and cast down the poor and needed, the elect. See, they about to come at us. Then we're going to know who Yahweh's chosen are, because they're going to come at, after us so hard. And slay such as to be up upright conversation. This is upright conversation, teaching the truth of the scriptures. All right, prophesying, being a light to the Gentiles. That's what you call upright conversation. Their sword shall enter in their own heart, that, that nuclear missile, and their bow shall be broken, all right? That great sword that they have is going to bring in their own timely demise. All right, because what they've done, because that's the only sin they really committed. All right, when they came against the nation of Israel, and I'm gonna leave off on this one. This is uh, Ezekiel 36 and verse five, and it reads, "Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, our power, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen." Against all Idumians, so-called white men, you are Idumians. That's your biblical nationality. 
You're not Anglo-Saxons, all right? You're not so-called white people. Nothing's white. Nothing's pure about you. You are red men. You are Doomians. You're the people of the curse, which have pointed my land in their possession. You've taken over the Holy Land and said it's y'all's, um, banging your head against the Western Wall and shit. Fucking demons with joy of their heart, with despiteful minds, with sick minds, degenerate minds, to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus save your how thy power. Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because you have borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore save your how I have lifted up my hand. Surely the heathen that are about you shall bear their shame. All right? So all of the things that they've done to the nation of Israel, because Israel is a people before it's a place. When he said about my land, Israel, he's talking about the people, man. When he's done to his elect, the Lord is about to tell their ass new, you know what, shut your mouth. All right. They're about to reap what they've sown here in the kingdom of men. All right. This is some beautiful times we're living in. All right. So get built up on your most holy faith. And just uh, be ready to take this ride because it's going to be a bumpy one. So with that, I'm going to get infinite honors to my heavenly father, my great king, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shemar, Rekaka Dodge, double honors to our elder apostles and elder bishops, a great millstone and salutation to my fellow labors in the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai pushing his beloved true cross of four winds. Call me Asherala, a Bible bomb.